What's up everybody, Blue Gabe. I'm out here in the Gulf of Mexico right now on a layout boat shooting buffle heads. Check out this sunrise. It's the most beautiful sunrise I think I've ever seen in my life. All right, y'all, we're in this little boat. It's not but about, I don't know, 10 foot long. He sets the decoys out all around you. You got your gun, you gotta lay down flat. Luckily, I got a GoPro set up out there filming me, so I'll get some cool shots. I'm gonna lay this big camera down, get tight, and hopefully bust some buffle heads and enjoy this beautiful sunrise. This is probably top two or three sunrises I've ever seen in my life. My first Drake Bufflehead. <laughs> All right, y'all, I just knocked two birds down. One of them was probably the farthest shot I've ever made, at least 75 yards with a 20 gauge. I just had my Drake Bufflehead drift by me on that side of the boat. This has been awesome. It, the shooting's been a little bit slow, but that was the most beautiful sunrise I think I have ever seen in my entire life, ever. The current is screaming by here. See how fast the current's coming by? Super important that your boater gets here quick after you shoot. That's what I'm talking about. Where you just picked that bird up is how far I shot that bird. A crossing shot with a 20 gauge. Check out how pretty this boat is. That's the only bird I've had landing the decoys, but I shot him right before he landed, obviously. There's your bird, sir. Look at that thing, y'all. That's every color of the rainbow. Look at that. Dude, that shot that was coming by, <laughs> I was like, Hail Mary, boom, plop. You see how the boater, he always stays near us. He stays out so he's not messing up the hunt. As soon as you shoot, he comes in and gets the bird. Look at that beautiful boat. And I completely forgot to mention that today is the last day of duck season here in Florida, 2020. So that's it, time to put the steel shot up put the shotguns away and start breaking out the fishing gear and the tackle, ocean fishing, headed down to the Keys to fish with Nick Stanzik. Actually, this week I'm going deer hunting in Alabama for one last whitetail deer hunt with Robert to the guys that own Frog Tog's place. So, got big things coming. It's so amazing how real these decoys look sitting out there floating like that. They've got about 10 foot of line to a heavy weight 
and the current's got them just swimming, just as beautiful as anything I've ever seen. I know one thing, I am super excited about this Benelli. I love it. I haven't shot it a bunch, did some quail hunting with it, did some dove hunting with it, and it knocks these ducks in the dirt, or in this case, the water. I shot that one bird. If my GoPro on my head got it, I guarantee you that bird was 70 yards when I pulled the trigger, and I didn't just wing it. I knocked it in the water dead as a doornail. Y'all, that is a wrap. Time to go bass fishing. Rip some lips, hopefully. I actually didn't shoot a whole bunch. I killed almost everything I shot at. Look at this pretty thing, though. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but his head's purple and green, just like a rainbow. He's going on the grill. <laughs> One thing's for sure, we got a good mess of duck to eat, and I'm super excited to cook them. All right, so now that we're picking up, I'll show you a little bit of the details on what we're doing. We had the boat upwind of the decoys, so when the birds did that big bank and come into land, boom, the only bad thing is, is we were looking straight into the sun. So we spread our decoys out about 40 or 50 yards. There's the boat. Hopefully this GoPro was filming and got some good footage for y'all. All right, so we got all my gear picked up, all my decoys, my layout boat. Now we're pulling over here to pick Blake up. So we take turns. Once you kill your lemon or you've hunted for about 30 minutes, you swap. So these buffle heads are all out here on this flat, feeding on little oysters and clams and crustaceans. And they just get up. It's, they're not like normal ducks. These birds will get up every 30 minutes and fly over 100 yards, 200 yards, and they're zinging back and forth. And they are a fun bird to shoot. So these buffle heads, what I've noticed is they're not like most ducks that you're used to shooting. They don't get up in the sky. They fly about two foot off the water and right before they see your decoys. They lift up about 10 foot and then they come diving back down and it makes for some seriously fun crossway shooting. Like, golly, this morning was insane. I only shot four drakes, that's what I killed. I was trying to pick out all males because today where we're going bass fishing, the big reservoir supposedly has some redheads and some bluebills, and I might try to finish off my limit for the day there. I'm super excited. We're pulling up to Blake right now. I'll tell you one of the most impressive thing about Hingham High Sport Fishing Charters, both Blake and Clay. Their gear is second to none. Their boats are second to none. Super nice. Everything is in tip top shape, ready to go. They put you on fish, they put you on birds. It's just insane how nice everything they have is. So these birds are out here on these oyster flats and some of them are only a foot of water. Some of them are four foot of water. These buffle heads are a diver duck, which means they swim down and feed off the bottom. Pretty cool. Hey, Cap, we're stuck. Yeah, it happens sometimes like that. Whew. Did you kill any? Yeah, I killed, I think I got three. I don't know, just hanging out. Now, here's the real question. What's the deal with the double barrel? A uh, $150 pawn shot gun, man, I love it. <laughs> it's just a fun gun to shoot. I don't know, just got to change it up every now and then. I'm just teasing y'all. There ain't nothing against that double barrel. I'm sure a bunch of y'all use them. My granddad grew up using them. I knew that's, I know that's what my grandpa's shotgun used to have is an old double barrel. I shoot a new Benelli. Finally was able to afford it, and I said, I'm spoiling myself with a new gun, and I absolutely love it. But now we're hung up on a sandbar. We got to get out and go get all his decoys, bring them over here, load them up in the boat, and then we're going bass fishing. We'll see y'all back at the dock.
All right, so we just pulled up to this island called Shell Island out at the mouth of Crystal River to get a thumbnail picture and just take some cool pictures for Instagram and Facebook. I'm gonna tell you guys, I travel the world. I've been to a lot of beautiful places. Crystal River is the most majestic, just beautiful place. There's, you know, mud flats, oyster bars, oak hammocks. Look at this island, it's just so beautiful. The plantation at Crystal River is one of the nicest resorts ever. Awesome kid-friendly place, fun for you and your wife. Bring the kids, leave the kids, it don't matter. The place has everything you could imagine. I wish y'all could see the true colors of these birds. Mm. Cap, that was an awesome hunt. Glad you had a great time, buddy. So I just met Captain Blake at the end of duck season, really at the end of grouper season, the end of everything except for the middle ground trips. And we're gonna do some of those, but next year y'all better look out. It's gonna be real. We're gonna lay down some awesome shows, do some awesome fishing. But right now we're done. We're headed back to the truck. We're gonna clean the birds, get everything loaded up for bass fishing, and we're headed to this big, huge reservoir that's supposedly really, really good. So I'm super excited. Y'all stay tuned, because we still got a bunch more to go. All right, y'all, we're here. We're at the bass pit. I heard there's big ones, I'm excited to see, but I'm not showing you the bass fishing in this video. I'm showing you the bass fishing in the next video. Right now, we're about to clean some ducks. All right, you gonna show us how it's done? I'm gonna try my hardest to. So we got us a Drake buffle head that we got this morning. All you're gonna do is just slowly start peeling the feathers right here out the stomach area. I think it's best to go against the feather direction just because I think they come out easy, easier most of the time. You don't make pillowcases out of those or anything? No, I, I tried once and my mom got mad when I brought it home. She said it smelled bad. So you're just gonna to wanna to peel all the feathers out around from the breast area. We're only gonna be breasting these birds. So you got your whole area shown right there. Get you a nice little knife. And there's a bone right in the middle. And all you're gonna do is just sit there and follow the bone. Follow the bone around, just keep cutting. Get to the skin side, and then you're just gonna slowly start uh, skinning the uh, meat off the actual skin itself. Peppered this one a little good. It's a little tender. Oh, that There's... blood will wash off. So anytime you have wild game that's got a lot of blood, like where you shot it, soak that meat in vinegar, a little bit of vinegar and water. It'll take that blood right out. Now he's gonna finish the rest of these ducks and we're going bass fishing. That little orange knife he's using is another knife that Danko Pliers makes. A lot of people have been asking me questions when I put the link below. Hey, where's the link to the knife? The company that makes the knife is known as Danko Pliers. So look for the Danko Pliers link and it will take you to the knife because they just don't make knives. They make pliers and dip nets and knife sharpeners and everything you can, bait nets and gaffs, everything you can imagine Danko makes. And if you use promo code BLUEGABE, you save 10 more percent. Right. Who do y'all think is gonna catch the biggest fish? Me, Blake, or Garrett? Leave a comment below, because right now we're putting this big old boat in the water and we're going bass fishing. I'm putting the camera down, and when you see me again, we'll be in my kitchen in Stewart, Florida, cooking duck. All right, y'all, we're back in the kitchen at my house. Long drive home. Got two videos to do, a duck hunting video and a bass fishing video. But right now, we're gonna cook this duck. Come over here close and let them see. So when I was cleaning it, I got in a hurry and left a little bit of the skin on. No big deal, because Frank the crab loves any kind of meat. This is as simple as this. I've already made those. I'm gonna make these for you real quick. Just a slice of onion, piece of meat. Take the can cooker all purpose. Like that. Piece of jalapeno. The reason I'm doing it this way is this seems to be the, like the most popular way for people to eat duck. Seems like everybody wraps it in bacon and I'm pretty sure that's because duck's not the best meat in the world. That could just be my personal opinion though. But Daniel here, who's behind the camera, seems to love duck. So I take my little Danko pliers, snip it off. Just this easy. I bought this little fryer just for this today. Just 
let them go swimming. So, I'm not a huge fan of duck, I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to try to hide it as much as I can. Bacon and jalapenos and onions. I'm even going to put some pineapple and teriyaki when it's done. But Daniel here seems hey, it's to good think. stuff, man. Liver and onions, baby. That's where it's Woo! At. His wife now, are you, are you excited for the duck? Uh, we'll see. To oh. be determined. <laughs> Frank might end up eating a lot of duck. Plus, it is wrapped in bacon. So or redneck. Or redneck. I used to hear all the time that you cook duck wrapped in bacon, so you throw the duck out and eat the bacon at the end. We'll see. All right, so I couldn't video much of frying it because my fan was on, but that's what they come out looking like. Then all I do is cut them in half and make little poppers out of them. I cooked them probably medium rare, put some pineapples on them, and now I'm gonna add just some teriyaki. Try everything I can do to, to hide the duck flavor. Now, give me that camera. <laughs> I gotta eat the first one. It's time for Daniel the duck lover to eat the first one and give me his honest opinion. Let's see. Oh, you avoided the pineapple, huh? Hey man, you gotta try it for what it is. If you don't like that, you can take it somewhere else, man. I'll eat the whole plate. You like it? It's good, man. Come on, mama. <laughs> <laughs> now I messed up and told her I, I can tell y'all now I cooked one and tried it myself and was like mmm it tasted so good until that minerally minerally I can't even say it wait till the duck taste hits your mouth <laughs> no actually pretty good you like it? Mm -hmm. So what I was trying to say is it tasted really good until that minerally flavor hit my mouth and then I just couldn't do it. But ever since that video I did with the Paco with catch them all, little, oh gosh, I'll get the gagging and can't do it. But that's my take on duck. Onion, cream cheese, jalapeno, duck, a little bit of the, what I use? The all-purpose can cooker. Deep fried it because I didn't want to grill. If you grill them, you end up burning everything so bad because the bacon cooks faster. If you fry it, you can cook that duck medium rare. You want some? Nod your head if it's a yes. <laughs> Y'all see it. That's all I did. Not a big fancy meal, but they're here. We're going to eat, put this camera down, be done with it. This video is long enough. Duck poppers, that's what we made. Now we're going to go out there and get a bass and clean him for the very next video. Thanks for subbing, thanks for liking, thanks for all the positive comments. But like Jake always says, wait, hold on, actually, Jake's here. We getting the heck out of shape.